Welcome to Real Estate Mortgage Shop, where we offer solutions to your real estate and financing scenarios. I'm Joe Garner, your host, mortgage professional. Catch this podcast and more at jogarner.com. Good morning, Memphis. Welcome to our listeners across the 50 states. You're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop, and I'm your host, Joe Garner, Mortgage Loan Officer. You can connect with me at jogarner.com. Our general topic today is how to look good to a mortgage underwriter. It's curb appeal for your loan and your lawn, uh, because we're going to have I'm going to have a special guest in here, a landscaping expert. And if you have uh, a question or a comment, text me today at 901-482. 0354 or call me directly off the show 901-482-0354. You can call us while we're live in the studio today, May 13th, 2017 by dialing 901-535-9732. That's 901-535-9732. During this show, I'm going to give you the inside scoop on what mortgage underwriters are looking for when they decide whether to approve your loan or not. You might call it uh, curb appeal for your loan. John Lawhon of Lawhon Landscape is going to be giving some tips on how to make your curb appeal pop for your lawn. His tips will help you if you're trying to get top dollar selling your home or maybe you're just preparing to have your in-laws over for a visit. (laughs) But if you have your house for sale and you want to have the best chance of getting top dollar for your home, you have to get the right people into your home. And if you've done everything right on the inside of your house, but you've neglected the outside of your house, you may look out your front window one day to find some would-be home buyers that's hunkered down in their car, looking over your house or from the outside and around your lawn, only to pull away from the curb, cruising onto a better-looking property. So watch out for that. John Lawhon of Lawhon Landscape Design, it is always good having you back in the studio. You've got some great tips to uh keep our curb appeal well uh, appealing. (laughs) Your family, gosh, y'all been in the business since uh, 1958, and you do landscape designs, you do the installation, irrigation, you do the spray. I mean, you you guys do it all, John. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what Lawhon Landscape offers your clients. Well, thank you, Joe. Um, I've grown up in the industry. My dad was a horticulturalist and um, Actually, I grew up on a on a commercial nursery to start with, but my dad started his own company. All of us kids worked in it together, and then I went to college and had a green landscape architecture from LSU. And uh, uh, my brother and I, who his degree is plant pathology, we worked together for many many years. And my wife Jennifer runs the office, so we've had a lot of experience. We've been actually having the landscape division since 1984. And uh, been continuous operation since then. It's pretty much all word of mouth. Oh, I'm telling you, oh, that you've got a long history. You've done a lot of good work for me too. Um, Thank you. You really, you really have. But uh, you know, not many people know this, but I got started in the landscape business too in Jackson, Tennessee. I enjoyed working with uh, realtors and builders and property managers. And you know, after selling the landscaping business, uh, I took a sabbatical for a few years up in Maine and got interested in real estate, particularly fitting the financing together for people who were buying houses. Almost 30 years later, here I am, still passionate about uh, the mortgage business, and I'm still working with realtors, builders, and property managers after all these years. There are a lot of similarities, though, between the landscaping business and being a good loan officer. Curb appeal is important for lawns and loans. Yes, um, um you know, the, uh, the loan market in, uh, affects us directly in many ways um, because a lot of people will need to spruce up their properties before they sell it. Um, a lot of times we, we've worked for a lot of real estate um, professionals as well as homeowners when they're getting ready to sell their homes. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, the mortgage market right now, is there. it's given us some pretty good curb appeal t- yesterday. After several days of the prices on those mortgages inching up, the lackluster economic numbers handed borrowers a nice drop in the price on mortgage rates. Uh, 30 years coming in around 4 to 4.125, some really cases. Good. Yeah, exactly. No points. 
uh, your 15 year coming around the uh, low to mid threes, really good. And if you're planning to buy a house or refinance one, let's talk. Let's lock your terms while these rates are in the trough. Uh, call me personally so I can work with you personally. The best number to reach me is 901-482-0354. You can also shoot me an email, jo at jogarner.com. But in a fast-moving market like we have here in the Memphis area and lots of areas around the country, you need to move fast on getting your financing approved so you don't take a chance of going past your contract date and losing the home that you wanted to purchase. Before a human underwriter ever looks at the documents in your loan file, an automated underwriting software program reviews everything we put in the loan application. The top priority with these automated mortgage underwriting scenarios is, uh, is, is assets, money in the bank. Uh, gold is king, I guess you could say. The top priority is to have assets available for the down payment and any other closing cost or prepaid property taxes and insurance, and that you have enough reserves in case of emergencies down the road. That's what it really likes to see. Some borrowers make the mistake of running out and paying off their Visa and their MasterCard accounts because they think, well, it'll make me look better to the underwriter. I'm going to run out and pay off all this debt before I ever go see a loan officer. Don't do that unless the mortgage officer specifically advises you to pay something down because showing more available funds in the bank can cover a lot of other not so good factors in your loan. So keep that money in the bank unless the loan officer tells you to pay something down. Equally important is the quality of your credit history and how high your credit score is. A really good score, if you have a score of like 700, that's pretty good. That is really good. Uh, an average score is around 680, and anything lower, you know, getting down in the 600s or 500s is uh, not so good. In the 600s, it, you know, you're really going to have some increases to your cost on the rate in most cases. But later in the podcast, we're going to cover some other mortgage approval priorities and um but if you are about to apply for a mortgage, let's talk. But you have to talk with me personally so I can work with you personally. You can connect with me at jogarner.com. You can call me, 901-482-0354. Make your plan. Let's work your plan. And if the deal works for you today, let's do it today. But, John, we've got about two or three minutes, and you've got some great tips on how to make sure the house has a terrific curb appeal. Share one of your tips or two, and uh, we can, when we come back after this break, we'll cover some more. What, what have you got for us? First of all, I, I suggest not to wait. We're not waiting until you're ready to sell the home to actually do improvements. It's, it costs so much more to try to dress a house up to sell it than it does, and you don't really get to enjoy it. But keeping a neat appearance, uh, keeping things trimmed and mulched and um, looking Orderly has a lot to do with the curb appeal. If it's in disorder, then people think the inside's disorder and unkept, whether it is or not. Mm -hmm. That's that's really good. And, you know, we were talking about before the show about mulching and we were talking about trimming and right. trimming up and things and not letting the the shrubs overpower the house or cover the windows or cover, cover the whole house i've seen that many times you know another another thing you know we've talked about before is accenting that front door maybe painting it a color that sets it apart even though it looks good with the rest of the house but sets it apart and then making small little plantings that kind of lead your eye to that front door that right. front that front entrance absolutely and i had shared a story about one time i had that idea and i didn't know you then john and i thought i could i was going to plant me a beautiful plant right by my my french doors go where i go in and out every day and um uh, I planted a rose bush. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it was tearing my clothes and everything. I got so mad at that plant, <laughs> but it was beautiful. But, you know, yes. anyway. <laughs> There are things that you plant, and then there are things that you don't plant. <laughs> well, that's why it's important to have the consultation of a professional, because I've seen many people go to Walmart or place or a Lowe's and buy this shrub, and they put it right by the door. Pretty soon it eats the whole front, <laughs> because they really didn't understand. It looked so cute when it was small, but yes, <laughs> comes a major problem later on. It costs a lot of money to take it out. Yes, the root system, the branches, oh, yeah. everything can be problematic if you don't plant that in the right place. But 
We've got a lot more coming up for you on the show today. We're talking about how to look good to a mortgage underwriter, curb appeal for your loan, and since we got John in the studio, curb appeal for your lawn, too. And we want you to be uh, on the show with us. So give us a call while we're live today, May 13th, 2017, 901-535-9732 to call us in the studio. So we'll see you guys back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Bob Turner, Board Certified Master Colorist with Gould's Day Spa and Salon in Collierville, Tennessee. You're listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop. Now back to your host, Joe Garner. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Inch by inch, row by row, bless the seeds I sow. I tell you what, there's a lot of people right now, this time of year, planting some seeds and getting that curb appeal up, isn't it, John? That's right. You're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer, and you can connect with me at jogarner.com. You can email me at jo at jogarner.com, and you can find me hanging around Evolve Bank and Trust. I hang around there at the Memphis office a lot, but I work in every state of the union. So if you've got somebody, you or somebody you know, I'd love to work with them, whether they're in the Memphis area or anywhere in the country. Our co-host today is John Lawhon of Lawhon Landscape. And uh, we're talking about how to look good to a mortgage underwriter. Curb appeal for your loan and your lawn. And uh, you know what? We've got, um, it's about that time. We're going to do a special today. We're going to do the talk shop business tip for real estate pros. We love our real estate pros out there. And it's um, going to be, Talk Shop is a marketing company offering free education and networking to anyone interested in real estate or in business. Talk Shop is made possible by the financial support of its sponsors and its advertisers. And for more about Talk Shop, go to talkshoppe.com. And uh, for our Talk Shop business tip today, we have Talk Shop advertiser Billy Nickel, promotional consultant with Geiger Company. And Billy, it's great having you in the studio. It's just, uh, wow, we, we, we keep meeting like this. How'd you get here today? Hey, Billy. Hey, John. Hey, Joe. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me here. Uh, I was on my way home, and my GPS happened to I've happened to come to this radio station, <laughs> and and I couldn't go home because my I may wake my wife up, and you know if you wake your wife up, you know what you would catch. <laughs> so you just landed here. I'll I just landed what. here. Yes, I did. I, <laughs> well, you know he's just kidding, but it, Billy is a lot of fun, and and uh, you can catch Billy at Talk Shop. He. He's there almost every Wednesday, but uh, Billy has been educating us at Talk Shop on some great ideas for promoting our companies, and he's really got some great ideas for our real estate professionals especially. Uh, Billy, you say that if you can't get it, you don't need it, right? Yes, that is correct. I, what we do at Geiger, I'm a, a independent promotional consultant, and we get together with you and find out what your needs are. Uh, we embroider uh, polo shirts, screen print T-shirts, we, uh, anything you want, uh, you want to pass out to your clients. Uh, we also do awards and recognitions, and uh, we uh, do marketing materials like letterheads, uh, checks, brochures, and stuff like that. Uh, well, t- I'll tell you what, can you share with us uh, a tip for our real estate pros? I know you have you have a couple of them. He's going to share another one later in the show, but uh, one of your tips, I really liked it, uh, that you were going to share right now. What, what's one of your real estate tip, uh, your promo tips for our real estate pros? Well, I have a, uh, what to call a gator clip. A gator clip is a clip that uh, has a magnet on the back, and it attaches to anything metal like uh, your refrigerator or your file cabinet and it holds up to uh, call a super gator clip it holds up to 200 sheets of paper and you put your logo or any type of contact information on it and i know it's a good promotional item because (laughs) one day i had i was passing out i had my name on some i was passing out to customers 
and he says, Billy, I'm glad you uh, came back uh, because the gator clip you gave me, somebody took it or stole it. <laughs> so I know it's a good promotional item if somebody steals it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to come back with some more uh, that uh, Billy's got some great ideas for how you can promote your brand at events like festivals and golf tournaments and things like that. Billy, thank you. And um, before we go, John, I think you had a question yeah, for Billy. I, I wanted to ask you how you got started in the promotional bi- business, Billy. Well, I was in the auto parts business and decided to do something else, and I needed to do something in a hurry, and somebody offered me here locally uh, to be a commission sales rep for the company, and that's how I've been in promotional products for the last You're uh, 13 years. You're a natural. The last 13 years, you've found, you found, you've hit your stride, but I want to go right back before, John, we're picking up where we left off in the first uh, part of the show. We were talking about ways that people can create curb appeal, and you were talking about the fact that just cleaning up and trimming back some things can make a world of difference and doesn't cost a whole lot if you do the work yourself. Absolutely. Um, and uh, just a little at a time, sometimes these things become overwhelming to, to a person when they look at what they've got to do. But if you just kind of a, uh, take it a little at a time, then you can, you know, uh, be, you'll be able to accomplish a lot more. Um, also, concentrate on what, how the front door looks, like you'd said, with painting, uh-huh, uh-huh. with some seasonal color. Uh, containers. Containers are really, you know, of course, they take a little more maintenance, take some water, but container gardening is a big thing, and you can add a lot of color to attract the eye to the door just with uh, large pots. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were talking about the the color. You were ta- You wanted to talk a little bit more in detail about what you can do with color to really make make that landscape curb appeal pop. Right. Um, the, we use the same um, uh, criteria that any kind of design professional uses as far as line, form, color, texture. Um, you want to carry the eye to the door and accent the door. Sometimes mm-hmm. that doesn't mean means that you don't have to plant the entire thing with colorful things, but you can use colorful shrubbery in the front as well as um, uh, seasonal color or perennials. Perennials mm-hmm. will come back every year. It's a good way to get a lot of bang for the buck. Um, and it helps everything, you know, draw the eye to the to the door and accent the house. We were talking earlier about uh, irrigation problems or just drainage problems in general. And oh, I think yes. you were sharing with us before the show a story about uh, one of your clients that just had a major, major drainage problem. It wasn't anything they could really do because it was coming from the neighbors. Is that right? That's right. I mean, this is a common issue. This is particularly bad. This uh, this group of uh uh, they're investors, and they bought this home in Germantown in order to uh, be able to sell it, fix it up and sell it. But they had major water problems coming through. So uh, things like that, you have to address the physical problems before you can get into the decorative right. problems. Right. So that's always a priority, and it's always a, a problem to try to figure out how to do this in a reasonable way that's the least expensive. How did you and, fix that one for them? Well, well uh, the main objective is to create like a creek bed in through there. We've done this numerous times. Um, <laughs> surface drainage is always a lot cheaper than trying to put in underground pipes. Mm-hmm. Um, and where you can do it um, and make it an asset rather than a liability, then it makes a lot of difference. We create a kind of a woodlands look, a woodlands garden along a creek bed bank. It's got to look natural. I've seen mm-hmm. a lot of unnatural mm-hmm. landscape solutions to me that looks you know that obviously doesn't look but you like put rocks in it and make yes. it look like a, a natural Ferns, creek bed all and kinds that's... of things you know make it give it a little uh not just a straight shot but uh kind of curve it around some nice accent stone um it's just the way you do it mm-hmm. um we always use um fabric at the bottom of them in order to keep weeds out of it as much as possible but if you can at all drain over the surface it's always a lot cheaper and trying to put down under we've done both sometimes there is no other option and you also put in irrigation systems we do irrigation <laughs> systems um we always put a rain check in there because i hate looking at irrigation systems going off in the rain they're not that expensive <laughs> um, and it saves water and it's just better for the environment as well you've got so many cool ideas and we've got just a couple about three minutes before we go to break talk about uh what was the 
the water plants that where they conserve water and all that people oh, yeah. really like those T- yeah. talk about the, what do you call um, those zero escape you know of course we've had the opposite problem around here lately <laughs> too uh, much water <laughs> too much water i've got a, a client right now that uh in order to tr- you know you yeah, I can could possibly build the ground way up, um, but it's so wet, it's much smarter to put plants in there that adjust to the situation, uh-huh. that can live in wet conditions, and actually help to dry up the soil. So that's that's our solution for for them. We're about to do that that uh, project pretty soon. I've done that in the past, and it's worked quite well. There's a whole palette of plants that are native and adapt well and can live in a wet condition. It's much better than that than trying to force a zayas or something in there that mm-hmm. that will not work in the long run. Well, and and just for our listeners, I will tell you that John has probably saved me. I don't know how much money by coming out and just taking care of some of my plants. The azaleas, if you have azaleas that uh, have that black sooty looking stuff on them, you need to get John out there to fix them because that stuff will kill your azaleas. And azaleas, mm-hmm. they're they're worth a lot of money. You guys came out and fed my plants, and you seeded my yard. And man, my neighbors think you, know, you guys are the greatest things in the Thank world. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're talking uh, on real estate mortgage shop today about how to look good to a mortgage underwriter, curb appeal for your loan and your lawn. We just we were just talking with John Lawhon of Lawn Lawhon Landscape about how to get curb appeal for your lawn so you can sell your house quicker for the top dollar. And, uh, you know, even if you're not selling your house, it's always nice to, if you have company coming over to have your lawn looking tip top shape. And when we come back from this segment after Fox News, I'm going to be giving you the inside scoop on how to look good on your loan. Some things that underwriters uh, prioritize that you may not think about. It will be that important. People make some very bad mistakes sometimes before they ever come see a loan officer thinking they're doing the right thing, and it's actually not the right thing. So I'm going to help you um, get get um, smart on that with the inside scoop. I am Joe Garner, mortgage loan officer. I'm your host of Real Estate Mortgage Shop, talking with John Lawhon of Lawhon Landscape. And we had Billy Nickel of Geiger Company, promotional company, come in to share our talk shop business tip for our real estate pros. We want you around the table. Call us while we're live today, 901-535-9732. We'll see you guys back in just a moment. The Mid-South's only home for news, weather, and traffic. News Talk 600 WREC, WEGR HD2 Memphis, and iHeart Radio Station. When you wanted to know something, she was there to tell you. Because I said so. And there was no questioning it. Mother's Day, when you need to know, Mom will keep you informed. But Mom, why? It's because I said so, that's why. News Talk 600 WREC. Hi, I'm Gwen Christensen with Builders Floors Interiors. We're located near the Wolf Chase Mall in Memphis, Tennessee. You're listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop. Now back to Joe Garner, your host. And he said, flowers are red and green leaves are green. There's no need to see flowers any other way than the way they always have been seen. Red Flowers, Harry Chafin, love that song. We're talking about uh, how to look good to a mortgage underwriter, curb appeal for your loan and your lawn. I am Joe Garner, your host of Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am a mortgage loan officer, and you can connect with me at jogarner.com. I hope you do connect with me. you got to talk to me personally so I can work with you personally. You can email me. J-O at J-O-Garner.com. We're talking also with John Lawhon of Lawhon Landscape. There's a lot of similarities between looking good on your loan and looking good on your lawn, and John can make you look good on your lawn. Well, thank you, Joe. I've, I've got a question, Joe. Um, what aspects of your mortgage application carry the most priority with the mortgage underwriter? Well, you know, the number one is assets, <clears throat> money in the bank. And as I shared earlier in the show, some people make the mistake of before they go to a loan officer, they'll run out and pay off a bunch of debt. That is not the thing to do. I'll share share with you why, a couple of reasons why. First of all, 
The top priority with underwriting is to have assets available for your down payment and any other cost or prepaid property taxes and insurance that you're going to pay. And they really like to see some reserve in the bank. Uh, Not all the time do they require reserves in the bank, but it sure does help. Just grease on the axle, as I I would say. Uh, So before you go run off and pay off a bunch of debt, go see your loan officer. I'd love for you to come see me. And uh, we'll what we can figure out which, where, what to do with the money first before you run out and pay stuff off. Number two is credit. Equally important is the uh, to assets is the quality of your credit history and how high your credit score is. We uh, you know a good credit score is about seven hundred, <clears throat> but if you start getting down below uh, into the six hundreds, it really starts to add uh, to the price of your of your financing. And you don't want to get a, a credit score that's too low because if you do that, it's gonna it's going to cost you. Uh, we always, of course, send people to the bureaus, the three big three bureaus. You can find information about that in the blog at jogarner.com uh, for today's show. Another thing about credit: thirty five percent of your credit score is made up of how you use revolving credit. So if you have uh, never used more than thirty percent of your credit limit, that is a good rule of thumb. Never, ever borrow more than 30% of your credit limit. And you'll set up some good habits, create a good score. Don't use 12 months same as cash, especially not before you're getting ready to buy a house. 12 months same as cash acts like a maxed out credit card, and it drops your credit scores. And I've actually seen people have their credit scores drop 60 to 100 points just because they went out and got a same 12, 12 months same as cash. But Miss Garner, I had to buy my furniture to go in the house that I'm going to buy here in a couple of weeks. Well, <laughs> you just dropped your credit scores. Watch out for 12 months same as cash. The third one is income. <clears throat> Mortgage underwriters want to see that the income is adequate and that your income is stable. Most loan programs, you know, they don't want you to borrow on with if you count your new house payment plus all the minimum requirements on your credit cards, your installment loans and things like that. They don't want that to go over 45% of your income. So uh, careful on that. We'll, we'll watch that. Don't go out and open up any new accounts once you get your loan application going. Watch out as far as income. If you are a 1099 employee and not a W-2 employee, in other words, they don't take out taxes, you know, you, you're like self-employed, you want to make sure that you have at least one to two years minimum history on that, preferably two years. Keeping your income to debt ratios, of course, under that 45% is important. But if you have a lot of money in the bank, going back to assets, sometimes these automated underwriting systems will allow you to go up to a 50% debt ratio because they figure, hey, you got the money, you can pay the the debt down if you need to. The other very important key that underwriters will look at on your file is the appraisal on the home. Underwriters want to make sure that the house is in, in acceptable shape. It's in an acceptable shape without any repairs needed that would affect the habitability of the home, like your your HVAC, your uh, your electrical, your plumbing. They don't want to see rotted wood. They don't want to see leaky roofs. They don't want to see bad flooring or drainage problems, John. I know you've fixed multiples in Many drainage times. problems for, for people. Well, um, I've got another question, too. Why are some borrowers turned down from one bank and get approved with a different bank using the same government-backed loan product? Well, yeah, that that has happened so many times, and I've seen stories on the Internet, but it's called overlays, John. Some banks and mortgage companies have extra regulations in place over and above the normal government loan program guidelines. They make you jump through a few more hoops, in other words. And if you get turned down due to a lender overlay regulation, you can usually go across the street to a different bank that doesn't have that overlay, and you can still get your loan approved on the same type of loan product. But let me tell you a little story. This is what happened to a customer that we'll call Dave for right now. He went to a really big bank for his veteran administration loan. Well, the regulations for veteran administration loans are the same for everybody, every bank all over the country. Well, he had a uh, contract to purchase a home, and he needed... uh, 
he needed to put his notice in to his landlord so he could be with, out within a couple of months of his rental property. His lender had given him a uh, conditional approval, and he sent in all of the documents to cover those, uh, pr- those conditions. The appraisal came back. It looked really good. He was told that the loan was you know, going to be approved. The next day, he got word from his lender that his loan had surprisingly been denied because he did not have enough money in reserve. Well, his loan officer had told him that the VA, the Veteran Administration Loan, when he first did the loan application, didn't require any reserves. Well, guess what? The loan officer was right about the Veteran Administration mortgage rules. What the loan officer and the borrower did not know was that the bank had a regulation overlay that required so many months, you know, that 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 borrower had to show of house payments left in the bank after closing in case of emergencies. Well, it was panic time for Dave and his family because they already had movers set up. They were trying to move. But here's what Dave did. He took his family to a different bank. By the way, I wasn't his mortgage officer on the first one, okay? (laughs) But Dave took his family to a different bank. He asked up front about the overlay, and the bank did not have that overlay that the first bank had. Dave took the uh, took the new lender all the loan af- uh, information that he had with the first bank, and VA transferred the appraisal over there. He was able to close in two weeks. But the story ended well with Dave because they got to move out of their <clears throat> old house, their rental house, and move into their new home. But overlays can trip you up, though, uh, if, if you don't know about them. you got to know about them. Sometimes banks don't publicize that they have overlays. In this case, the first bank did not even tell them or make it clear to their loan officer either either that they had that but uh, here's here's other things that can trip you up a loan officer uh, I had a customer who called me this week and they had been turned down by different bank not by me but by different bank for a loan on the purchase of their vacation home well once I had the loan in the system I was able to make two small little tweaks on their terms, let them pay a little bit more money down and I'd tweak something else and voila, their loan was approved in that automated underwriting system. The customer said that the other loan officer never asked any further questions, never tried a second method or never tried to tweak anything. Just told them, I'm sorry, your loan is denied. So when the computer software said it was denied, they just didn't do anything. But I did and we were able to get their loan approved. So there are situations like that. Well, I know that you've helped two of my key employees get a loan when they were they were turned down, and one of them was literally in tears. And you you really saved her, and we appreciate it so much. It's so nice to have someone who's actually knowledgeable and cares. Thank you, John. And that's that's a sincere comment that's not any made up stuff well thank you you know I, I've been in the business almost 30 years and I figure I learn something new every day so hopefully I know a few things about how to tweak things well, you definitely do <laughs> but thank you John and uh, you know we are talking about how to look good with an underwriter and to sum it up I, I guess you could say as far as the underwriting goes uh you need to find out if they have any overlays, mm-hmm. if that company has any overlays. Because even though you qualify under the program, if they have something extra you don't fit, you need to know before you pay the money for the appraisal. And I guess the other summing up of this conversation here, if you are turned down on a loan, you need to go get a second opinion, just like you do with the well, doctor. Well, you need somebody, well, this is landscaping too, that actually knows something. Yes. <laughs> You know, that really knows something and cares. That's the main thing. <laughs> well, thank you, John. Yes, you do need <clears> to go to uh, check and get a second opinion. Don't let that just go by without without trying. So that's what I have to say about how to look good for a loan office uh, loan underwriting. You need to have the assets are number one, and your credits number two, income, and then the appraisal situation. If you have a, a appraisal situation where you've got repairs on there that the appraiser has mentioned that are structural in nature or affect the habitability of the house you're going to need to work out with the seller and you the buyer who's going to pay for those uh, repairs and if they can be escrowed after closing or not you need to work that out so those are just a few hints to the wise that i would share with you as a uh, mortgage loan officer
But we're getting ready to go to break. You're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer. I would love for you to connect with me at jogarner.com. You can send me an email, jo at jogarner.com. Or just give me an old-fashioned call. You know, I just like to talk to people, (laughs) really. Uh, My number is uh, direct is 901-482-0354. And uh, John John Lawhon, how do we contact you? Uh, 901-754-747. For. And we've got Billy Nickel from uh, Geiger Company in the in the studio with us, and he's got a really good tip for one of our for our real estate professionals out there. And we're going to be covering that when we come back. We'll see you guys back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Rita Connolly, personal trainer at the YMCA in Collierville. You're listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop. Now back to your host, Joe Garner. Okay, I'm getting into this music over here. Green grass and high tides by the outlaws. <laughs> You're on Real Estate Mortgage Shop. I am Joe Garner, your host, mortgage loan officer, and I would love to connect with you. You can connect with me at jogarner.com. You can also find me hanging around Evolve Bank and Trust. We're talking with John Lawhon of Lawhon Landscape. And, John, how do we contact you again? Uh, 901-754-7474. We're talking about how to look good to a mortgage underwriter curb appeal for your loan and your lawn and you know what we've got billy nickel who he, he said he had um he just happened to land here because his gps brought him here this morning but <laughs> i think there was a little bit more to that but billy nickel is a talk shop advertiser he helps support talk shop and giving free education and networking to the business community in the memphis area through uh talk shop and uh, he's he is a professional promotional consultant and Billy's been in the business a long time he's educated us at talk shop meetings on Wednesdays Uh, just great information and we're going to take a moment and we're going to let you Billy share another talk shop business tip for our real estate pros Good morning, America. I'm (laughs) Billy Nickel. I'm with Geiger. I'm independent promotional consultant. And I'm here to help you increase your brand awareness through promotional products. So today I'm going to talk about golf tournaments. Uh, We we carry brands like Unarmor and Nike. Or we can do uh, put your brand on a golf ball. We can do banners uh, and stuff like that. The more people recognize your brand, the more people will recognize you. My phone number is 901-233-1487. And you go to my website, H-T-T-P-S, two slashes. It's a colon and two slashes. A colon and two slashes. Thank you, Joe. (laughs) Uh, Billy, B-I-L-L-Y, nickel, N-I-C-K-O-L, all one word, dot Geiger, dot com. And Geiger's G-E-I-G-E-R dot com. Correct. You know, I got a story. Uh, I, last night I was at the uh, bras for the cause <laughs> where the guys were um, <laughs> modeling the bras to raise money for a uh, benevolent fund for the, oh, that, the realtors. That was beautiful. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, it was fun. And uh, Tim Van Horn, he's a, uh, he, he's a, um, he does the Memphis Morning Show, of course, here on WREC. Well, he's in the real estate business with Cry Light. And uh, he, we were at, uh, he said he was out at one of these events, like you're describing, Billy, and he was wearing his shirt that he had his brand, you know, his cry like brand, right. and he was a realtor and his name and all that stuff, a big bright red shirt and a hat and all that. And he was standing there talking to this lady, and she said, you know, I, I need to move out of my rental property. I need to buy a house, and I'm, I'm not sure what I need to do. And he started laughing, and he started pointing at his shirt, and she goes, Oh, I always still think of you as being, you know, the media personality. I keep forgetting that you're in the real estate business, but the fact that he had his shirt on and he could point to it and all that, she, she, we just closed her loan uh, with, with Tim and I was the loan officer and it was so much fun. But he said he can't tell you how many times wearing his brand on his shirt really helped him, you know, get that business. So, Billy, uh, what's your phone number again? It's 901 233 one four eight seven and joe 
If I can't get it, you don't need it. You don't need it. That's right. I'm Billy Nickel, independent promotional consultant with Geiger. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for your supporting Talk Shop, too, Billy. Talk Shop offers free networking and education to anyone interested in real estate or in business. Talk Shop meets every Wednesday, 9 o'clock to 10, over at Novacopy Conference Center, 7251 Appling Farms Parkway, Memphis, Tennessee. This Wednesday, May 17th, 2017, Philip Kemp of Reed and Associates of Tennessee presents Get a Life, Get a Property Manager. What you don't know is a landlord can hurt you, and he is really a sharp guy. Mm -hmm. He'll really help you out. Find Philip Kemp at 901-461-4662, or you can go to myreadhome.com, read R-E-E-D. Talk shop events are free thanks to advertisers like Pat Goldstein, top producing realtor in Tennessee and North Mississippi. Mississippi. Put Pat to work helping you buy or sell your home. She is the gold standard in real estate. Her number is 901-606-2000. She's with Cry Like. Talk Shop recognizes Jana Cardona, Executive Director of Business Network International in the Mid-South region. BNI helps its members build their businesses with the power of referrals. Go to BNIConnect.com. We want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I hope you have a marvelous weekend. You are so appreciated. We wouldn't be here without our moms. Absolutely. (laughs) Amen. For this podcast of Real Estate Mortgage Shop and more, Go to jogarner.com and uh, you just come call me, whatever you want to uh, do, however you want to contact me. I will help you with uh, getting your loan approved, answering questions that you have. It would be my pleasure. Remember to make your plan, work your plan. If the deal works for you today, do it today. We have a couple of quotes from the quote corner, John. Uh, this one is about looking good. It's from Pinterest. It says, instead of cleaning the house, I just turn off the lights. <laughs> <laughs> How about that for a house cleaning motto, huh? Here's another one. It's from Unknown, and this is uh, about gardens, so I figured you'd like this. This was a sign in someone's garden, and it says, All our visitors bring happiness, some by coming and some by going. <laughs> <laughs> love that one. I may have to put that it's in my, my garden. <laughs> but uh, we've loved hanging out with you guys, and just uh, just just call us. I mean, we would love to help you. I would love to help you curb appeal your loan so you can get a great deal and not have to go to a different company. (laughs) You know, (laughs) don't have to deal with overlays with me. Uh, We fix all that for you. And John, any closing comments that you have or summaries? Well, um, I was just going to tell them a little bit. We also, in addition to doing um, a lot of commercial work, we really love to do residential work. That's where I really have my passion. But Every year we try to do something, uh, some project that's sort of a gratis project for the community. We think that's real important. So we've done things for the Church Health Center. For Paige Robbins, I designed the entire back garden there. Um, We've done uh, Ronald McDonald House. We put in irrigation for no cost for for them years ago. And so my favorite project you did was the Collierville Town Center. Oh, my word. That is award winning. We we did all design for the the square. We didn't do, do all installation, but we... We did the master plan design for that. Yes, you did. I love going up there. And uh, and you said Paige Robbins and some other right. places. If you want to see some things that John does, you can go to those places in Memphis. Or what's your website, John? Uh, www.lawhonlandscapedesign.com. Yeah, go check that out. Hey, we've loved hanging out with you this Saturday. Go and go love and kiss on your moms and buy her something nice. And we'll see you guys back next Saturday. Thank you for listening to Real Estate Mortgage Shop, where we offer you solutions to your real estate and financing scenarios. I'm Joe Garner, your host, mortgage professional. Catch this podcast and more at jogarner.com.